this first Deccan is devoted to the topic of the um, religious conception of art, of art as a theophany. Um, but it's also kind of devoted to the history of, of art. And um, I think what I will, the way I'll kind of jump off into this is just to talk a little bit about the uh, vision of Genesis Peerage. Um, I happen to be listening to their uh, memoir in the van, and uh, I was just listening to the very beginning of it, and uh, I think it's a nice contrast, or like, um, contrast as well as comparison, because I, you know, I would say that among, among, you know, a truly kind of near, near contemporary artists, uh, there's a lot to compare between myself and Genesis. Uh, but there's also a lot that's very different. And um, so, you know, what is similar is that, uh, you know, we both believe, uh, you know, first of all, have, uh, we both sort of have, you know, literal kind of dogmatic belief in the afterlife, uh, or in reincarnation, that, um, you know, that, like, this body is just, that, that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, you know, I, I, I tend to really think that, um, although not as, not quite as wholesale as, as Jen, I think, because I, I see that as one of four possible perspectives, um, but as, but I, I really think it's true. Um, and, and then of course, uh, the gender stuff. I think we, I think we have a similar gender, <laughs> uh, gender situation, I guess. And, um, and, uh, make very extreme music and also have had a, uh, very kind of combative and kind of confrontational relationship to uh, to music audiences or, or you know um, or you know, society, I guess generally. Um, but in a lot of ways, I feel like the exact opposite of Genesis Peerage. Um, so, like I was just like like I was early I was in the van earlier today listening to this audiobook and the first chapter has some um you know some statements in it um it 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 details or it not details but it kind of provides a vignette of an encounter with William Burroughs and Basically, it's like the first time they met, and uh, I guess I don't really talk about her, the description of the encounter, but the kind of punchline was that art is about um, breaking free from power, or, or, or creating short circuits in power, and so Genesis on the one hand has this very spiritual attitude towards art, you know, that it's, um, that, you know, it, that, that the point of art is to sort of provide a realization of sort of your true spiritual nature, and it's supposed to have a kind of salvific relationship to the, to the world, or it's supposed to, or to, to the, the viewer anyway, it's supposed to break free from, um, uh, you know, sin, um, but the, the modality, it's like, it's like Genesis takes for granted, basically, I'm, I'm kind of talking around the bush, like, uh, beating around the bush, Genesis takes for granted a kind of victim mentality, right, it's like, 
it's always about finding finding out what the power relationship is and breaking free from it. And there's this assumption, there's there's this antagonism um, that Genesis kind of fuses with um, fuses with spiritual enlightenment. And um, I, I, so to state the obvious, most spiritual art uh, is not this combative towards society. Um, most spiritual art, if anything, is usually aligned with some kind of power structure like a very powerful church or something like that. Um, and spirituality, especially Christianity, um, but r really of almost all kinds, is, is, uh, is much more about um, uh, renouncing one's own worldly desires uh, and sort of like submitting to a kind of higher authority. And that authority is God, often as manifested through a church or something like that. And, um, and, and with Genesis, it's like there's this punk attitude where it's sort of defying all authority. And it's really violent and antagonistic, and like, like, like really, you know, um, re really dangerous, really uh, uh, you know, evil, I guess. And um, there's something to that as well, for sure. But I guess in my view, no, I mean, I would say that, I, I think this is really true, that um, it's not the same thing as spiritual realization. It's not the same thing as enlightenment. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't listen to throbbing gristle and it bring you closer to enlightenment, usually. Um, and, uh, you know, in, you know, in my work, the, because I, okay, I also honestly don't really like Robin Gristle very much, or I, I've never that, I've, met, I've never been that interested in, in Genesis Peerage's music. I've been much more interested in sort of the sort of personality and ideas and j just sort of that, um, that drive to combine, um, first of all, to combine ideas with uh, extreme music, and then also to combine spirituality with punk. Um, those are actually both pretty rare things. Um, the music itself, uh, you know, it's a little mid, like it's not like well written. Um, I think Genesis has no real respect for craftsmanship. And, uh, you know, we're talking about music here, like, you know, Beethoven is better than uh, Bob and Grizzle. Um, and for me, uh, you know, in, in music, like, craftsmanship is just so important. It, is, it doesn't necessarily have to be really complicated. You, you can make something simple that is crafted well, but, you know, let, let music do what it does best. Um, and, uh, and, and that is to kind of sculpt sculpt the soul to make it actually more mature, you know, for, for it to experience an instance of, like, really refined and powerful sublimated emotion. Um, uh, the, the, the philosopher of music, Rob, uh, Roger Scruton, who really only takes classical music seriously, um, makes this case pretty vividly, you know, that there's, that the, the, the tonal music uh, that's, that's composed in a certain way can sort of have this um, har harmoni harmonizing and maturing effect on, on a person or a group of people or a society. And, um, you know, I just think that that's a big part of what music is for. And also, I think that there is that kind of short circuit breach energy. Um, 
that is important too, and that's kind of, I think, why, why I'm so interested in fusing classical music with black metal. Um, so, I, you know, I'm talking about music now, and I guess I meant to be talking about art, um, but I mean, in, in my visual art, those same tensions are, are, are there. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of contemporary art, which takes for granted the fervor mentality towards art, uh, has, has no craftsmanship into it, or, or the artist totally outsources the work, or doesn't even, you know, want, really want to make work, it's, you know, more about, you know, the, the career itself, or the show itself, as a kind of concept, or an intervention, or, um, or, or just the, the social network of the art world itself is almost the material, um, or public opinion is the material. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I keep having the thought in my mind, like, this, this, n not just during this, uh, talk, but in others, that, like, it sounds so simple when I just say it like this, because of course it's true, um, but most practicing artists don't, um, exist in both of those silos. You know, you choose a more conservative orientation, and that's about, you know, the, something high and beautiful and refined and uh, more loving, but more constrained and maybe more aligned with uh, established power structures. Or you're, um, you're an avant-gardist or a punk or, you know, um, a enfant terrible or a libertine and your your work has this kind of destructive quality that is um that is antagonistic towards power and um uh you know why not both and um uh you know, because either one is co-opted so the fullness the fullness of the human spirit both of those are available to the human spirit and if we're really trying to have art make us set, set us free and everyone says that right art is about making you free setting the soul free that it needs to be freed in four directions because that's just what the soul is and if it's freed in just any one direction it will be co-opted right that, that like there's some kind of evil force in the world um that wants to co-opt people and keep them resentful and helpless, um, and to make them more, more and more resentful and helpless. It's not the only force in the world, but it's a very, very powerful one. And um, and and I think that I, I mean, don't, don't, I, I feel like I'm criticizing Genesis Purge a lot in this. I mean, I think that uh, Genesis is a real visionary and has had a sort of very salutary effect on the world. But was starting, uh, you know, was really had uh, their heyday uh, in an earlier time when all that was more new, um, and that, that that doing something like that again in the year twenty twenty three, uh, like it's already co opted, you know, um, even even being non binary is kind of is, is co opted in this strange way. Um, partly, you know, uh, and, um, yeah, so, and yeah, and, and so what is the spiritual dimension of art exactly? Um, I'll, 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 I'll talk about that next time, I guess, like, w what exactly it means for art to be a sort of site of, like, theophany. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. It'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. Liturgy's on tour. <laughs>